Rabia el Adawiya. Hassan came upon Rabia one day when she was sitting among a number of contemplators and said, I have the capacity of walking on water. Come, let us both go on that water yonder and sitting upon it carry out a spiritual discussion. Rabia said, If you wish to separate yourself from this august company, why do you not come with me so that we may fly into the air and sit there talking? Hassan said, I cannot do that, for the power which you mention is not one which I possess. Rabia said, Your power of remaining still in the water is one which is possessed by fish. My capacity of flying in the air can be done by a fly. These abilities are no part of real truth. They may become the foundation of self-esteem and competitiveness, not spirituality. Abud of Omdurman They asked Abud of Omdurman, Which is better, to be young or to be old? He said, To be old is to have less time before you and more mistakes behind. I leave you to decide whether this is better than the reverse. Ajami Hassan asked Ajami, how did you reach your present heights of spiritual attainment? Ajami said, Through making the heart white in celestial contemplation, not by making paper black with writing. Conversion Malik, son of Dina, relates this operation of behavior and conversion. Malik was exercised in mind about the debauched behaviour of a dissolute youth who lived near him. For a long time he took no action in the hope that someone else would intervene, and finally people started to complain about the young man. Malik then approached him and took him to task, asking him to reform. But the youth informed Malik that he was a favourite of the Sultan, and that nobody could stop him from doing whatever he liked. Malik said that he would go to the sultan, but the youth assured him that the ruler would never change his mind about him. In that case, said Malik, I will report you to the creator above. The young man said that God was far too forgiving to reproach him. Malik was nonplussed, and he left the youth to himself, but presently his reputation became so bad that there was a public outcry against him. Malik set off to reprimand him again. As he was walking to his house, however, he heard a voice from beyond call out, Do not touch my friend. Malik was astonished and walked into the presence of the youth in a state of confusion. As soon as he saw him, the profligate asked why he had come again. Malik said, I cannot reproach you, but I must tell you what has happened and he reported the experience with the voice. The evildoer said, If he is my friend, I will give all my possessions to him. Abandoning his wealth, he became a wanderer. Malik Dinar met this man again one day in Mecca. The youth said, I have come to see my friend, and he died. Raised and cast down. A man on a camel passing the sage Zardalu shouted at the sight of such a humble one who was believed by his followers to be a great teacher. If the teaching is designed to uplift man, why is it that so many men can be found who are cast down? Zardalu answered without raising his head, If it were not for the teaching, man would not, I agree, be cast down. He would be extinct. Perplexity There was once a man who lived quietly in a certain place, not far from a mountain. He was well behaved and refined, but the ordinary people did not see anything very remarkable about him. But he had an attractive manner 
and there was something about his kindness and understanding which made many people visit him and ask his advice. Whenever anyone came to see him, he gave them advice. One, for instance, he told to open a shop, another to learn how to build rafts, a third he recommended to learn about the growing of plants and how gardens were maintained. One day, a number of people who had set out to try to find truth paused in their journey and were talking to one another. The first one said, I was able to bring the whole group safely across the treacherous torrent which we have just crossed, because a certain man once recommended me to learn raft building. The second man said, When on this journey we were all captured by brigands, I secured our release by showing the chief of the robbers how to cultivate his garden. I was able to do this because of the instructions given me by a certain man, who suggested to me that I learn about flowers and gardens. A third man said, We have escaped the terrors of wild animals during this journey because of the instructions given me by a certain man. He it was who, when I asked him what I should do in my life, said, Learn how to overcome wild animals. And the same was true of all the other people in the caravan. When they compared notes, each discovered that he had been told one simple thing about how to progress in life, though few of them had realised how important to their survival it might become. The guide who was with them on the journey said, Just remember that if you had not taken the advice of that man, none of you would be here, for there are many people who went to him for counsel, and who laughed at him or forgot his lessons, because they did not recognise that there could be any inner meaning in what he advised. When the travellers arrived at the end of their journey, they saw that their guide was the very same man who had lived at the bottom of the mountain, who had given them advice. They had hardly recovered from their amazement when he took them into the presence of truth, and then they saw that truth was nothing less than that very same man. Then the travellers were perplexed, and their spokesman asked, Why, if you are the truth, as we now all see, did you not tell us at the very beginning? so that we would have been spared this journey and all these discomforts. But no sooner had these words been spoken than they realised, because they had seen truth, that they would never have been able to perceive truth unless they had been through the three stages, the stage of advice and taking it, the stage of travel and applying their knowledge, and the stage of recognising truth itself. They had been able to arrive at their destination only because something in their inner selves had been able to recognise, in the ordinary advice of the man at the foot of the mountain, some inner ringing of truth, some fragment of reality. In this way can man come to the recognition of the absolute truth. Admonition to Disciples Now that you have been enrolled in the ranks of the seekers, it is more than ever likely that you will stumble. For forgetting that self-esteem can manifest itself anywhere, you may think that you are immune from it. Just as the gains of enlistment among the friends are great, the requirements of the disciple are higher than is needed in ordinary affairs. Hassan of Basra illustrated this with the following tale, recorded in Tazkarat. I saw a drunken man trying to walk through a marsh, and I said, Take care that you do not sink, for that is a quagmire. The drunkard answered, Hassan, if I am swallowed up, only I shall be the loser. Think of yourself instead, for if you sink, your followers will go with you. Hassan of Basra Recorded in Tazkarat, Hassan of Basra relates, I had convinced myself that I was a man of humility and less than humble in my thoughts and conduct to others. 
Then one day I was standing on the bank of a river when I saw a man sitting there. Beside him was a woman, and before them was a wine flask. I thought, if only I could reform this man and make him like I am instead of the degenerate creature which he is. At that moment I saw a boat in the river beginning to sink. The other man at once threw himself into the water where seven people were struggling and brought six of them safely to the bank. Then the man came up to me and said, Hassan, if you are a better man than me, in the name of God, save that other man, the last remaining one. I found that I could not even save one man, and he was drowned. Now this man said to me, This woman here is my mother. This wine flask has only water in it. This is how you judge, and this is what you are like. I threw myself at his feet and cried out, As you have saved six out of these seven in peril, save me from drowning in pride disguised as merit. The stranger said, I pray that God may fulfill your aim. What to do? The Sufi sage Abdul Alim of Fez refused to teach, but from time to time would advise people about the way to proceed on the path. One day a disciple, who was both incapable of learning and regularly driven abnormal by attending mystical ceremonies, visited him. He asked, How can I best profit from the teachings of the sages? The Sufi said, I am happy to be able to tell you that I have an infallible method which corresponds to your capacity. And what is that, if I am allowed to hear it? Simply stop up your ears and think about radishes. Before, during or after the lectures and exercises? Instead of attending any of them.